Okay, um, so we'll only take about maybe 20 minutes, 25 minutes at the most. And uh, all we want to do is take a look at 7b, okay? Lecture 7b. And that's where you have your possibilities for your next outline. The reason why I want to do this is um, your first outlines, for the most part, you followed what I was what I was looking for. But there were a couple of you who still were kind of retelling what was happening in the story. So I just want to give you a couple of templates, things that you can think about, right, for your second outline, which is worth 25% of your grade, quite a bit. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start really basic stuff, and then we'll get a bit more sophisticated as we go along. Okay, so let's start. Let's start with the basics. I mean, really the basics. Simple outline. Okay, so uh, think about it this way. Okay, in your outline, you need to figure out, you know, that arc that I was talking about in the in 7a. Okay, in the lecture that I just gave. So what's the arc? Rather than simply saying this is what's going on, I need an arc to take me through things. Okay, so we talk about arrival. Okay, this notion of appearing. Then we talk about transformation. And then we talk about some kind of resolution. Now we've been through that already, but I'm trying to show you here. Somehow you have to take me through your essay. So that's the most basic, simple outline. Okay, obviously you're going to fill in the outline as, as, as you do it, right? But, but basically, you, 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 as I said, you need some kind of arc for development. So we have the arrival. Of Esteban, then we have the transformation of the town, and then we have the resolution. But like I said, that's not going to get you a very high grade, obviously. Okay. Well, okay. Maybe, maybe we could do something like the second one that I have there, Esteban as a Christ-like figure. Now, the reason why I'm showing you this, there's a very specific reason why I included this. Be very careful if you try to write an essay like that, because inevitably, okay, I shouldn't say inevitably, but there's a very good chance you'll end up writing a comparative analysis, a comparison essay, and you do not want to do that, okay? So, you talk about this mysterious arrival, miraculous events, martyrdom, and resurrection. In other words, maybe in your essay, and again, this is going to get you maybe a B-, minus. Maybe you talk about Esteban as a martyr. Okay, Remember we talked about St. Stephen and all of that? Okay, so maybe that's an essay topic. Again, I'm trying to show you, like, like not everything I'm going to show you will get us an A. But a few of you were, you know, getting Cs on the, on, on the last outline in the last paper. Okay, how do we get you into the B range? Well, maybe something like that would work. But you don't want to just show that Esteban is Christ-like. That's not good enough. If you really wanted to <laughs> make it sophisticated, you would take an idea like that. But then you would argue, okay, why is it even important that Esteban falls into a Christ-like category, like the, the, the figure of Christ? Why, why is that important? Well, okay. Now you could get into, you know, which I didn't talk about in the, in the lecture, why do we need, okay, figures larger than ourselves, okay? Religion, mythology, why do we need these things? And if you were able to answer that question, okay, why is Esteban, okay, or the importance of Esteban, why is that important? Why do, why do we need things outside of ourselves? Then, you could maybe talk about Esteban as a Christ-like figure, the significance of Esteban as a Christ-like figure. But if all you do is simply say, okay, Esteban falls into, you know, the, the, the same categories and qualities as Christ, well, B minus, because all you've done is a comparative analysis, right? So like I said, I'm not saying you shouldn't do, like you can't do it, but don't expect, expect an A if that's what you do. And so, the same is true, okay, with the third one, right? Esteban as Quetzalcoatl. Okay, well, well, I mean, it's better than a C. Okay? You're not retelling the story. You've got an argument. Remember back to, okay, sorry, just give me a second here. I've got something in my throat. Remember back to the very first day we, we met, all right, even though we didn't meet. Um, 
And I showed you, this is a, a C, a B, and an A. Well, okay. So if you were to argue that Esteban is a, a, a Quetzalcoatl-like figure, okay, fine. So you have an argument, but it's not very sophisticated. So again, that would be a low B, okay, if that's all you do. But is there any significance behind why Marquez chooses Esteban to be similar to Quetzalcoatl? Okay, that, and again, I haven't provided you with that answer. Okay, that might, might get you into a higher level. Okay, all right. So with, there's a big lightning storm happening right now, by the way. So let me just, yeah, I should do that just to get, yeah, it's kind of wild out there. You might hear the thunder, but anyway. Okay, so you can talk about, I mean, let's just say you did a bit of research on Quetzalcoatl. All right, arrival from the sea introduces people to the unknown. Well, ironically, the unknown is that which is in, inside of them already. Right? In other words, they don't, they didn't, didn't even know that they had the possibility of transformation or what have you. All right. I mean, you could go about it that way. And then purification. Okay. He returns to the sea, but ironically, it's the people who are purified. So see what I mean? Like, so that's not bad. It's not bad. I mean, that, that could get you maybe a B, you know what I mean? But it's not going to get you an A simply by, simply by saying he is, you know, that type of figure. Okay. Okay. Just trying to think of a couple of other things here. Yeah, this whole notion. Let's go back to the first one just for a second. So arrival, transformation, resolution. Well, in your notes, I actually have, I think, I'm trying to remember now if I included it or not, but land is fixed, sea is fluid, and then, you know, the change or what have you. So like I said, you need some kind of order in your outline. But the first three here, they're not bad. They're not bad. But they're not going to get you an A. Okay, now let's go to page two. And on page two, we begin to see, okay, how do you take this to the next level? And I think you guys, you, you guys see it by now, don't you? Take a look, it, it, it just sounds so much, so much better. Imagination and the importance of the other. So we start with, literally, you can go ahead and steal this if you want. I'm not kidding. You can go ahead and steal exactly what I've written here you still have to fill in, right, based on the lecture and everything else, but use that as your umbrella headings. The problem with tradition and history. So where would I go? Well, why don't I just go to Foucault? That's all you need. To get an A, that's all you need. Go to Nietzsche genealogy history. Boom, done. Go quote the stuff that I showed you that's in the notes, all right? But do it properly, okay? Remember, the idea here is I'm trying to show you how to put an essay together, right? So I don't mind if you go ahead and, you know, take stuff from what I've given you. That's the whole point. But if you do that, go back and make sure that you document it properly by not quoting from my notes, obviously. Like, like do not quote from my notes. Go get the article, print it off uh, with all of the publication information, right? And then quote it correctly as I've shown you how to do Okay, so let's do now an A paper, all right? Okay, and by the way, we're going to come back full circle. So the problem with tradition and history, okay? Or if you don't want to say tradition, although you could you could use the word tradition, but remember I talked in the lecture about the collective past, okay? But only because that's the, the phrase that, uh, that, that Foucault uses. I think he does, anyway. Recognition of the other creates possibility, right? And then finally, how the other allows us to see beyond our own limitations. And an interesting word that you could include there, right? Maybe, maybe the last thing in your outline. Remember, we're talking about outlines now, right? Horizon. Right? Remember that, that that's how I ended off the lecture. So beyond our own limitations, that's the horizon. Right? Over there. <laughs> I'm kidding. Anyway. Okay. So now let's just say you're running out of time. You want an A, but but you don't have time to go do what go back to Lacan. Go back to Lacan for goodness sakes. All right. The men in the story, I have some in the story are stuck in the imaginary order, but you're probably better off just saying the men, right? They're never defined individually. So the men in the story are stuck in the imaginary order. 
Okay? They need to move through the mirror phase, but they need help. So it's that outside influence, right, that allows them to get through the mirror phase, and therefore they finally embrace the symbolic order. I don't need to elaborate on that, right? I mean, we've talked about that when we looked at Paul's case and uh, uh, earlier, earlier lectures. But again, it, you want to be clever, right? Maybe you saw something in Foucault that I didn't even talk about. If Let's just say you read the, the Lacanian model. And maybe you saw something in Foucault and you thought, oh, oh, you know something? That would work really well here. Perfect, perfect. Do it. Or do your own topic, right? Totally up to you. I'm just, again, throwing around ideas, okay? Just possible ideas, all right? And then finally, not finally, but I mean another one you could do. We could talk about the notion of truth and how this notion of um, concealment. Remember Aletheia? Remember the word that I, I throw at you? All right. So at the beginning, again, to create an arc for your outline, which of course then will create an arc for your paper. Well, we have the problem with concealment, things being hidden. And again, I'm being a bit vague there, but I showed you a few examples of, of course, with Esteban himself, right? But maybe there's other concealment going on in the story. And then we have the importance of something called disclosure. I don't know if I used that word in the lecture. As a matter of fact, I don't think I did. But but in your in the notes that I sent you, it's there. So the notion of of of, of, of revealing right means to disclose. If if I disclose something to you, I'm sharing with you. I'm sharing like if I disclose a secret, I'm sharing the secret with you. So the idea of di to disclose, the importance of disclosure, and again that can to, to disclose well means to reveal. Okay, if I can play with language just a bit. So remember the whole handkerchief and, and like all of a sudden now the men see. Okay, my goodness. Think about think about all the word blindness, blindness in the handsomest drowned man in the world. Boom, there's the title of your essay, right? You know what I mean? The notion of blindness, but it's a, a kind of psychological blindness. There's a thousand different things you could do depending upon how you want to go about it, right? You could talk about blindness in relation to Lacan. He never talks about it, but you could you could introduce that idea, right? What is it? What is it that holds us back from going through the mirror phase? Well, it's a kind of blindness, okay? And it takes something in order to push us through that. Boom, okay? As we kind of saw in Paul's case, right? Or actually, as we didn't, sorry, as we didn't see in Paul's case, because because he was held back by the problems in his youth, okay? So let's do that one again. The, and so, like I said, if you're looking to get an A, you're not on page one. With your outline you're on page two okay so let's finish that off and then i'll say a couple more things not even 20 minutes all right so we have the, the importance of disclosure and then how disclosure reveals truth now remember you'll have to work through those ideas i can't give you everything i mean what do i mean by how disclosure reveals truth well it'll be truth as you see it okay or or it will be actual truth in, in, in terms of a revelation, maybe you bring in Aletheia, okay? So, again, I, I'm, I've got a, a th thousand different things I'm throwing at you right now. I'm just trying to show you how we can begin with something as simple as this whole notion of, you know, um, arrival, transformation, revela uh, resolution, okay? That, that, that'll give you a structure, but then you want to add to that. You, you want to build off of that, right? You want to make it much more sophisticated. The only way you're going to do that, if there's no sense in emailing me, right, saying, well, I don't understand what you meant. And, and no, you have to do some work. You'll have to do some work. And I mentioned that to some of you on your first papers, right? If you think that you can simply watch the lecture, then write a paper and get an A, that's not going to happen. It's simply not going to happen. You need to go do some research, but again, I've given you everything you need. Go read Nietzsche Genealogy History by Foucault. Read it a couple of times. Make your notes. Don't just rely on the notes that I send, because th those are just snippets. There's, there's so much else in that article that you could use, depending upon your argument. All right? So remember, even if you go use Nietzsche Genealogy History, that's not guaranteeing you an A because you might simply write an argument based on my lecture. 
What I'm hoping, and that's why I've been a bit vague when it came to showing you the story, the arc of the story, because I want you to give your insight, right? But the, but the idea of tradition or the past and all that, no problem. That, that's fine to do that, okay? All I'm saying is don't rewrite your class notes. Some of you did that on your first paper. There's no way you're getting better than a C+. If all you do is rewrite your class notes, I can tell you haven't done any work whatsoever. Okay, I, That sounds harsh. I'm saying, how do we improve? We improve by doing the work. And so if we were in class right now, we might have taken another 10 or 15 minutes, right? But I think by giving you those templates, it gives you an idea of where you can start with a C and how you get to an A. So let's just close off with a couple of things. Sorry, I've got a tickle in my throat. So let's just let's just be as obvious as I can. Notice on the first page, the first example, it's incredibly simplistic, is it not? Then the next two, they get a bit better, right? In other words, yeah, you can start to see an argument going. So now, let's think about your course outline. Well, I told a C paper, yeah, I'd say, yeah, that first one looks like around, it falls into the category I gave you, doesn't it? The next two, okay, on the first page, and yeah, that falls into around the B range. They're not great, but, but I mean, but you're getting there. Then let's go to page two. Ah, let's take a look at an A paper. What does an A paper entail, okay? It almost looked like I was picking my nose. I'm not, it just, my glasses were bugging me. So go look at your outline, right? What does an A paper entail? Boom. Now we begin to see the language, the sophistication, right? How the argument just got elevated. It's, it's there, is it not? So that's why I began this course by saying, in high school, yeah, a lot of English was subjective, right? If your teacher liked, I mean, there it is. It's, it's incredibly, incredibly clear. So do the work. Chances are you get the grade. But there is work to be done right? To get an A. So I think that's enough for today because, um, yeah, the first part of the lecture went almost an hour. And so we're now into, yeah, week seven, okay, or lecture seven. I hate to say week, okay, lecture seven, sorry. Um, and you've got your outline coming up and then you have your final paper. There's a, a whole chunk of your grade left, right? So if you haven't been happy with your grades, you know, for the first couple of things, we've got lots of, of room to make up, okay? Lots of room. Uh, as a matter of fact, yeah, I think there's about 60% of your grade when you think about we also have a quiz later on. So, so we've got time to improve. But as I said, if you're hoping to improve, you'll need to put in the work, all right? But anyway, I think, I think that's enough for, 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 for this, this lecture. Uh, and as I said, you've got your notes, you've got the videos in front of you. So yeah, I think we're good. I don't know why I'm, I'm prolonging this. All right. I'm going to enjoy the thunderstorm now. Okay. Thanks. Bye.